When it comes to stormwater management, whenever it rains, that water must go somewhere. For thousands of years, natural processes have developed channels, streams, and stormwater mitigation that are occurring in our natural environment. But as soon as human activity interferes, additional precautions must be taken to prevent flooding or damage to the environment. Primarily, the use of impervious surfaces, such as that are found in roadways, roofs, and other man-made structures, cause changes to the natural stormwater functions of the environment. Hydrologists and engineers needed methods to determine how stormwater would interact with their environment. These methods were developed close to 100 years ago and are simplistic to some of today's methods, but are still useful for many practices. These methods need to be computationally simple to allow for the use on a slide rule calculator. One of these methods is known as the rational method and has been long used for calculating peak flows and other factors regarding stormwater design. So we're going to be introducing what the rational method is. Basically, it revolves around this core equation of Q equals CIA. And let me explain each component of this equation. Q stands for the peak flow in cubic feet per second off the stormwater site. C stands for the runoff coefficient. I equals the rainfall intensity in inches per hour. And A equals the drainage area in acres. It also must be noted that the rational method has some natural limitations. First off, the drainage area cannot be larger than 200 acres for this equation to be accurate. The peak flow is assumed to occur when the entire watershed is contributing runoff. And the rainfall intensity is assumed to be uniform over a time duration equal to or greater than the time of concentration T sub C. The peak flow recurrence interval is assumed to be equal to the rainfall intensity recurrence interval. So let's get into each component of this equation. So for the runoff coefficient C, this represents a ratio of runoff to rainfall. You can see in this table here that there are many different area types with character of surface with different runoff coefficients. For example, an area will have a greater runoff coefficient if there is more impervious surface, such as in a downtown or neighborhood area where there's lots of impervious surfaces such as asphalt. Then if we look at somewhere like a lawn or a flat lawn or anything else like that, we can see that the runoff coefficient is going to be less because any area with natural occurring surfaces such as lawn or forest are gonna have a lower runoff coefficient generating less overall runoff, meaning there'll be a much smaller peak flow value coming off the site. Next, we'll look at rainfall intensity I. This indicates the rainfall severity on the site. This can have quite a range, but will have a definite impact on the equation. The next is the drainage area A, which, which indicates the total basin size, and it's measured in a horizontal plane. Like I said, we can determine runoff coefficients from the tables we see there, and this will play a major part in using the rational method for our equations. Manning's roughness can also be used for overland sheet flow and more complicated equations. Let's go over two different rational method design examples here. One that is much simpler and one that has a few more advanced features involved. So for this first one, we want to determine the peak flow of a site. It has an area of 10 acres, a runoff coefficient of 0.78, and a rainfall intensity of two inches per hour. How would we determine the peak flow? We would use the equation Q equals CIA. So Q equals C, the runoff coefficient of 0.78, I, which is equal to two inches per hour, and A, which is 10 acres. This gives us a peak flow value of 15.6 CFS. Now maybe you're thinking, how does acres convert to feet per second? But as you can see with these different dimensions of the equations, that everything works out in the problem. Next, we can look at the second example here with the rational method. Determine the maximum peak flow of a 14 acre site with a 50% downtown area and a 50% flat lawn area that have a rainfall intensity of 2.5 inches per hour. So because this area is split and does not have one kind of land use, we need to determine an average runoff coefficient since it's equally split 50-50 and then determine the peak flow. So since there's 50% downtown area, if we look at our chart here, we're looking at for the maximum peak flow. So we're going to be using the 0.95 for the runoff coefficient. For flat lawn, we're going to be using 0.17 for our coefficient. If we average those because they have the same amount of area, we get a runoff coefficient of 0.56. Then using Q equals CIA, we get 0.56 times 2.5 times 14 acres, gives us a peak flow of 19.6 CFS. And those are the basics of the rational method. It's a long used method for calculating peak flows from project sites and was designed with simplicity in mind. Although there's more advanced methods such as continuous simulation hydrology that have come along, many jurisdictions still use this method. You can find an overview of different methods such as continuous simulation, the SCS runoff method, or the rational method in our ultimate hydrology guide, which is 100% free, and you can find it in the description box down below. If you have any questions about the rational method, you should leave it in the comment down below. Anyways, we thank you so much for watching, and we will see you guys next time.